Hi, so we're in lockdown three and I've been thinking about what to do uh, with this one. I've been doing a lot of heritage and mapping related things during the last two lockdowns and why not continue that strategy, I thought. So I've done quite a few YouTube tutorials on, tutorials on how to map using OpenStreetMap and um, I thought a bit more systematically. With heritage societies in mind and also maybe teachers who are looking for projects of introducing children or young adults to mapping using OpenStreetMap and also individuals who are interested in heritage and who maybe want to do a bit of mapping on the side or just interested in making maps for their projects. Uh, maybe you're writing a local history book uh, and you're looking for a map as an illustration and you don't want to spend money on ordnance survey map or something like that and you can't use Google of course because there's copyright uh, involved in that. So you might learn a few things if you're watching my tutorial series. I'm going to do a bit of a, like a fake FAQ because nobody has asked me these questions. Well, not all of them anyway. Um, so I'm just going to set the questions and then answer them and uh, hopefully cover everything that's relevant to you. So why OpenStreetMap? That's the most important question, I think, in this context. So OpenStreetMap is... Um, you're probably all familiar with Wikipedia. You might like it or not like it, but I'm sure everyone has used it. And OpenStreetMap was based on the idea of Wikipedia. So OpenStreetMap is often described as a map, which is kind of true, but it, it is a map, but it also is a very, very powerful database um, of geographical data. And you might say, well, why not use Google? Well, Google is a commercial, um, enterprise and they have different interests in mind than history, unless it's for tourism maybe. Um, the good OpenStreetMap is that you can add data and everybody in the whole world has access to it then. Same with Google, but like you have to respect their copyright and with OpenStreetMap you do too, but you don't have to pay or anything like that. You just have to um, attribute OpenStreetMap contributors, which is um, when I'm getting to the videos of, about OpenStreetMap in detail, and I see that in the bottom right corner of your browser that it often it always um, copyright OpenStreetMap contributors, which could be you, hopefully. And um, um, OpenStreetMap is open data and open source. Open source means, um, well, how I understand it anyway, um, is that um, Anyone can contribute to it, again, like Wikipedia, if you know how to program, obviously. You can't just, you know, <laughs> add code. Um, you have to know what you're doing. But also it means that if you have an idea for, let's say, an OpenStreetMap, like in Ireland, there might be historical features that aren't a thing in any other country. Like, I don't know about creameries, but it's nothing I had ever heard of before in Germany. They might have existed in, in the UK as well, but they're certainly a very Irish thing, a thing of the past now, but a lot of the buildings are still there. So if you wanted to add that information to OpenStreetMap, you have a Creamery building, which might be vacant now, it might be used as a shop, it might be used for something else, but that would be something you could add in OpenStreetMap, and then you could run a search, you know, once it's all done for the whole country or for your county, or for, well, there's probably not more than one in the town, so yeah, but for your county, say. Um, you can run a search, which will be another video, to show all the creameries, for example, and then make a map of where the creameries were, and then maybe someone wants to analyze, you know, the shortest distance between the creamery and the church or something, I'm just, you know, making things up now. You need the, the information in the map to use, um, to use it for geospatial analysis and things like that, all these big words. Um, don't overthink it. Uh, part of that is that you can filter data, which you can't do in Google Maps. As far as I know, you can't tell Google, show me all the, and I'm going to leave the heritage topic now, show me all the defibrillators uh, in my area. I'm pretty sure Google can't do that because they're not mapped on Google Maps as far as I know anyway. But you, could, you, you can add them in OpenStreetMap and then you can make a map of those or someone could write an app and then let the app show you where your closest defibrillator is which is you know very useful if someone in your area is having a heart attack 
You could use it for heritage things like show me all the rain forts in my county. Of course, they all have to be mapped first. But, you know, that's the thing about open data. You have to put in a, a bit of effort first, but you might not be the only person doing it. If you can get your heritage society involved or just a group of friends, you don't have to be organized in a heritage society or um, transition your students or, you know, something like that. They can add all the ring parts and also most of them might already be added to OpenStreetMap for the county you're in. Uh, and then you can um, filter those and then make a heat map or something, you know, if, if you're writing an essay about ring farts or whatever, um, you can make your own map and then use that there and it's all for free. You just have to learn how to do it, unfortunately. But I mean, who doesn't love a challenge? A question I often get is, do you get paid for this? Short answer, no. Long answer. I don't get paid for it. <laughs> Most of the contributors on OpenStreetMap are volunteers. There's a couple of um, Amazon staff that do add uh, the odd driveway or house number or something like that. But again, they have their own interests in mind. You know, they want to find the fastest way to deliver the parcels. So they add the driveways and the house numbers. So the next delivery person finds them faster. But most uh, other people are normal people who just um, spend their spare time doing this because they have this community spirit and they believe in open data and in open source and in doing something useful with your time, which I think is very important, um, especially in times like this. I find it helps me to keep busy and to keep sane. I mean, it depends on your definition of sane. Some people might think I'm obsessed with maps, which I admit to. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The answer is I don't get paid for adding data to the OpenStreetMap or for making these videos. If you are a member of a heritage society and you want to invite me to do a talk and then if you want to pay me I'll gladly take your money. Um, no problem. As you have me uh, in person basically because all the other videos I will probably not be on screen. So wait for that. Just a few words about me. My name is Anna. I'm from Germany. I lived in Leipzig before I moved to Ireland in the December 2016. When people ask me where I'm from in Germany, I usually say Leipzig, which is not entirely true. I've lived there for a number of years and that's where I identify to be from. If you really want to be precise, I'm from Nordhausen, which is in Thuringia, which is right bang in the middle of Germany, former East Germany, so it's Leipzig. I have no geographical background education-wise, I just love mapping on OpenStreetMap. Uh, I have a degree in linguistics and literature, so it's I guess it's the soft skills that count. I'm also a director of OpenStreetMap Ireland since June 2020. There are seven of us, I'm the only woman. Um, there are a great bunch of people and if you want to join the OpenStreetMap Ireland community, you're very welcome. They're all very friendly and we have a telegram chat which I won't link below because then we'll get more spammers and we don't need them. But if you're really interested, you will find the link elsewhere. Yeah, they're very helpful and they all have very diverse interests. Um, some people are more interested in mostly the areas. I mean, everybody's mostly interested in the areas they live in and map those um, mostly because you can just go and check up on stuff and it's, it's the easiest way to do it. Um, some people um, have a more historical interest, um, some are more, are more interested in, say, boundaries, like um, electoral district boundaries and all these kinds of townlands and so on and so forth. Um, some people are more interested in cycling, so they would add all uh, stuff related to um, cycling, so cycle paths, um, bicycle parking and so on. Some people have children, they're most interested in adding playgrounds and um, family-friendly restaurants. Very few non-family-friendly restaurants in Ireland, to be fair. Um, things like that. And also, uh, what, we, what we mustn't forget is that you don't have to live in Ireland to map in Ireland. And also, you don't have to map Ireland if you live in Ireland. You can map in Germany. We have German mappers who live in Germany, who do map Ireland because Germany is fairly well. Sorry for bringing up Germany all the time, but that's just what I know about. 
with a couple of um, German mappers who live in Germany, uh, but they do map in Ireland because it's more of a challenge and they maybe they like Ireland and they want to find out more about it without being here. And at the moment we can't travel, so that's just fair. Um, I think that has answered most of the questions. And if it hasn't, just write a comment below and I will try to respond as fast as possible. And uh, we'll start with the first video, which I haven't decided yet what it will be, but um, I'll add a little teaser or something in the end. Slán!